Welcome to the What's Up Ready Podcast, where we fashion ourselves cinematic judge and jury. My name is JJ Carter. I'm here with my co-host, Mattson Heiner. Better red than dead. And Alec Burgess. Let's get it. Man, that, that was a quick return to the old way. I know. I, having my time in the light. <laughs> like, just so you know, like, I went to say your name first, and then it just felt weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, this is, you guys are fucking with me right now. It's <laughs> funny. But anyway, yeah, so... uh Welcome. We appreciate you tuning in. Go ahead, hit that follow, subscribe, like, bell notification buttons, all those buttons. Tell a friend about us. Uh, tell a prison escapee about us if you can find one. Um, also, tell them about our sponsor. I'm sure after a few years in prison, they might need it. Uh, that would be Manscaped. We appreciate them sponsoring this episode. Um, you know, and just to give you a, some quick hits on why they're sponsoring us, you know, they are the leaders in below the way grooming it's holiday time so it's finally time to jump in with our sponsor at manscaped.com um they've got the new fifth generation performance package which includes this fun to tool the lawnmower 5.0 um yeah so go do that it will help you avoid another silent night in the bedroom this year take care of your special snowflake with the lawnmower 5.0 ultra, like I just showed you, and watch your South Pole shine like never before. I I'm gonna use this euphemism <laughs> for the rest of my South life. Pole shine like never so before. Great. Um, you can get the best stocking stuffers by going by of all by going to manscaped.com. You can also use the code the verdict for 20% off plus free shipping. Uh, Miss Claus will thank you. And uh, I've been having a great time using Manscaped, especially. The weed whacker because I'm an old man and I got an ear and nose hairs and it's been really nice. Um, and I'll say, look, I've used them before and usually I get that like weird tingly feeling when I shove it. This one's not that bad. Still gets me, but like, yeah, it's good. I like the the weed whacker. Look, so us glad gingers. I learned about your tingly nose and ears. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the ears don't tingle. Just no, it makes me want to see so dude. much about you, JJ. I You're love welcome. what well, it's, I love. It's what about the, the it's about to get worse, Alec. It, mm, the yeah, listening gosh. audience doesn't want to know this, but gingers have sensitive skin. We also have tender hearts, but Manscaped, <laughs> the lawnmower 5.0. I've had I've I've had the one from a couple years ago and just got the new one. Um, and I will say it has been nice to my very, uh, just, you Two know, balls. delicate, soft, precious skin down there. It's helped me. Your South Pole shines like never before. South Pole shines. <laughs> Wait, did you say you have a tender heart? <laughs> is, is that something you threw? <laughs> where, where the fuck did that come from? I love it. You know, this time of year, just I just feel the love for everyone. He had to get that in there because we always call him the soulless redhead. I, mean, I know, I know, I have one, I have one, but I want to end. <laughs> I, I've been preparing this personalized jingle bells song with myself and Manscaped. So let me just let me just go on a rift here. I love it. Jingle bells, red men swells, Manscaped all the way. Oh, what fun it is to trim in a safe and easy way. Hey, jingle bells, Manscaped sells tools that are so fine for the redhead gent who wants to present a smooth and neat line dashing through the hair with a lot of in our going <laughs> over the hills we go, trimming all the way. Oh my bells gosh. on redhead ring. Making spirits bright. What fun it is to laugh and sing a Manscaped song tonight. Oh, jingle bells, red head swell. Manscaped it all the way. <laughs> oh, what fun it is to trim in a safe and easy way. Hey. Oh, shit. And we're done. Oh, I liked it better when Manson was gone. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Manscaped. I'm going to keep my private parts shiny and smooth. Mm. Real talk, oh, Manscaped is the one-stop shop for all your holiday needs. They got the perfect gift in the Performance Package 5.0 Ultra, which includes loads of perfect stocking stuffers for any man or woman in your life who could use a little bit of Manscaped. What could be better than the gift of a good hygiene and a few laughs? Let's be honest. Uh, you can get that lawnmower 5.0 Ultra, and that's the crown jewel for the family jewels this holiday season. 
uh, so you don't get any of those nicks and cuts on good old Santa sack. Uh, protect the jingle bells. That's right. Protect yeah, the jingle Santa's bells. Back. Oh boy! So if you're needing it and everyone needs it, go to get twenty percent off and free shipping with the code the verdict at manscaped.com. That's twenty percent off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code the verdict. Uh, say ho 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 to a well groomed mistletoe with Manscaped. We appreciate you guys, Manscaped. Uh, Fuck me, Jingle Bells, Redhead Swells is gonna be stuck in my head for the rest of my life. I know. I, that's we got to make that a short. Uh. <laughs> Put that shit on TikTok. <laughs> I love it. Hey, for uh, our uh, for our viewing audience, I'm currently eating grapes. These could have been Manscaped. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you eating hairy grapes? That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. I'm just gonna stop. And we're gonna like talk about the fact that we have a new movie to talk about in our month. Of- I'm gonna oh, I'm gonna gosh. choke on my food. <laughs> I'm dying over here. Oh this is <laughs> this is what it's <laughs> And if you want that to happen, to never mind. I'll stop. Alec, that was um, a dangerous time to take a sip of water, bro. That yeah. might be coming out. Yeah. Oh shit! This is why the irreverent brand we that we love of Manscaped <laughs> fortunately chose to help uh, sponsor our show for a little while, anyway. Until they watch that back. shit, and then they're gonna it's be, like, be back for very much longer. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, thank you, and I'm sorry, Manscaped. <laughs> With that. We're still in December, our month of movies that are worth the rewatch. Uh, so, again, thanks to our patron, Charles, or Guy Pierce, as he's also known on patron, Patreon, for choosing our movies and the topic this month. Uh, this week, we're reviewing The Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> I was too busy laughing, and I'm not prepared. <laughs> it, it was released on October 14th, 1994. It was written by Stephen King and Frank Darabont. It was directed by Frank Darabont. It stars Tim Robbins, Morgan Freeman, Bob Gunton, William Sadler, Clancy Brown, Gil Bellows, Mark Rolston, James Whitmore, and Jeffrey DeMunn. Jingle bells. <laughs> Shut the fuck <laughs> Over the course of several years, two convicts from a form of friendship seeking, cons- cons- whoa, seeking consolation and eventually redemption through basic compassion. It's a strange uh, one there, but whatever. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be distracted the whole rest of this podcast or this recording. But yeah, so Shawshank Redemption. This is another choice of yours, right, Alec? Oh, Am yes, I crazy? it was. Another good pick. Two for two. <laughs> yes. Suck my Wednesday balls, man. Hey, hey. <laughs> suck my red <laughs> I like good movies. We've been over this before. Oh my gosh. Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes it's a You're the problem, Matson. Oh, I've missed you two together. It just makes me happy. Um, I want to start on talking about this movie because like I have a new appreciation for this movie since I've been to prison. the prison, like where they filmed it. The Ohio State Reformatory was where this was filmed. It's Hold up, Jay, Jay. Did you visit yeah. or were you incarcerated? <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you listen to our last podcast, it's a fair question. <laughs> um, <laughs> I visited that particular prison has been shut down for a very uh, that's long the, time. It's an important key where you like, did you have to get out of jail free? We these are where we your questionable character, especially up the last episode. So. <laughs> if you're wondering about that episode, it was where we talked about Goodfellas. Go back and listen to or watch that one. Um, yeah, <laughs> more manscape shenanigans there, too. Yeah, if you uh. It, I visited. Now there is a penitentiary, a, a working penitentiary right behind it, um, but it's mostly used now for ghost tours because it's supposedly haunted, and that's why we went. But um, you can also go and just tour it, and then like it's cool because like the sets are all still there because it's been used for a couple of movies. So there's a there's this weird gate that's on the side of it that they used for uh, Air Force One. When they broke the dude out of the Russian prison, that's the prison that they did. And that helicopter actually got almost got shot at because you're not allowed to fly over active penitentiaries. And with the penitentiary, the real one right behind it, they didn't clear the helicopter flying over that penitentiary for Air Force One. So there was a bunch of like police and guards like standing when they landed that helicopter. It was not a good thing. And then they also used it for um, 
Tango and Cash, if you've ever seen that movie. So, yeah. Anyway, really good. But it was really cool. So, like, inside, like, all of the stuff that's there for, like, the warden's office is all, like, the desk is still there, the typewriter, all that shit. The only thing that's not there is the safe. Because at the time when they filmed it, it was, like, this high-tech, really fancy safe. And it was really expensive. So they took it out of the wall. So there's just this square hole where the safe used to be. And then the apartment, the halfway house apartment that they put uh, Brooks and Red in um, is part of the, the living area of the prison. So when they had this prison and it was active, the warden and his family lived in the prison. There was a residence part. And then there was like bunks and shit for the guards and they would do like overnight stays and whatnot. But there was a house that's attached to the prison and that's where they filmed a lot of like the, the warden's office, like the library pieces. And then there's like this weird room off to the side that has this big beam across it. That's still to this day, I have a picture next to underneath it that says Brooks was here. So was red. Like, yeah, it was cool. Like I, so I have all these pictures of the actual prison. Now the, the where they keep the prisoners, like the bars, parts, like the actual cells were so rotted and old in the prison itself. And it's huge. It's like four stories tall, the actual prison. What they did is they there's a warehouse down the road from the actual prison. And for those scenes in the cells, they rebuilt, they recreated uh, one of the cell blocks for in a this warehouse. So it looked newer and didn't look as raggedy as they because they're old. I mean, and they're run paints falling off. It's all sorts mm -hmm. of crazy shit. But yeah, it's really cool. Like you get to walk it, you're like, fuck. And then they got like the tunnel that he crawls out of. Like they actually have the prop. And then there's like this camera hole that runs along the top. So they had this camera that they pushed along the top of it. So that you and it would move the inside camera and the up above camera that you see the different angles of him crawling through the hole. But like I have pictures of like the tunnel. It, it's it was pretty cool. It was a fun little tour to go on, and then we hung out all through the night for the ghost hunt. I'm glad you cool. got out of prison, Jay. I know. Me too. But it looks like a big castle. You wouldn't even know it was a prison. Like those, mm -hmm. when you see it in the background of like the press conference where the warden's talking about like the work program and shit. Like it actually is like looks like a big giant castle instead of a prison. But it's a it's an interesting building. But yeah, so every time I watch it now, like I see the things that I've, I'm like, I've been there. I've sat in that chair at the warden's desk. Like, it's cool. So it really kind of changes the way I watch the movie, but it's a really good movie. I don't have any of those really cool experiences. I just like that they <laughs> got away with casting Morgan Freeman as an Irish guy and calling him <laughs> red because he was Irish and got away with it. Yeah. Nobody cares. <laughs> Nobody cares. <laughs> In fact, I love that line. I think it's because I'm Irish. <laughs> it's good shit. I think this was like his breakout, wasn't it? Like, I know it he had started, to be one of them. He started acting at a pretty older age. And then I don't think he got famous until pretty close to after this, if I remember right. Now, I don't know much about his filmography, but. I think it was one of the first ones that really pushed him into the huge limelight. Cause I'm, yeah, I mean, he, I think he started acting in the sixties, but I mean, he's old. I think he was in his forties almost when he started acting. Um, I, I guess technically it wasn't his breakout cause he played a significant role in what they call smart street, which came out in 87, which he got an Academy award nomination and then driving mm. Miss Daisy in 89, which That's he played true. a lead role. So this was probably Miss Daisy. Those two probably propelled him where he, I think those are big, but this one, like, I mean, clearly this is, I don't remember those movies or know of them. I remember Shawshank Redemption. So I think this is the one that like really, he broke, he had already broken out, but then he like broke through, he prison break. There you go. There you go. He also did lean on me. I always forget about lean on me. That's probably the one that really launched him was lean on me in 89. Like that one was great. He plays a principal. Um, but yeah. So, Jay, we already know what question I'm going to ask you. Another yeah, yeah. exposition movie. Yeah. So this one I love. Um, but it Morgan comes. Morgan Freeman. Yeah. As I say, it comes down <laughs> to Morgan Freeman. Like, if you think Ray Liotta sounds badass doing one, Morgan Freeman gives you chills. Like, that guy was born to do voiceover. Like, that's 
Casey like loves watching like the nature shit on like Disney Plus and whatnot. Like, and I'm like, okay, that's cool, but it's great if Morgan Freeman does the voiceover. I'll watch any of it because that guy's voice is just outrageously cool. So yeah, but I no, it's another one that and this one it's minimal. Like, I don't even notice that they're doing it because it's the way that he does the exposition is more of <clears throat> like a story That's within time. the story. Yeah. Like, it's almost like we know they're skipping 10 years at a time. And so he's catching us up on all of the minutia of being in a prison because he talks about in one of them, you know, it's the routine, you do the same shit for 10 years. And so what are we going to watch? Right. Like him doing the same thing for two years, 10 years, another 10 years. So I think it fills in the gaps for what you need. And and it also comes close to the, the source material. Again, this is another one. Like a lot of people are like, wait, Stephen King wrote Shawshank? That's yeah, I cool. didn't know that. He also wrote The Green Mile. He like he's done a lot of books that aren't horror move horror. They have dark undertones, things like that. But this is one of those books that it's very similar in that voiceover area so it makes a lot of sense to the story so speaking of stephen king because i remember when i just watched it recently i was like is this a true story and then i was like oh mm -hmm. clear it's not it's, it's a book but mm -hmm. most of stephen king's books that have turned in the movies he doesn't he's like very against them doesn't like them didn't support many of them this is one of the few where he thought it was better than what he wrote especially mm -hmm. because he felt the ending was ended in a way that he didn't even write it as good as the mm -hmm. the liberties that the writers took and so this is one of the few literary works that has made it to the big screen that he absolutely like, thoroughly loves. Yeah. The easiest way to tell if Stephen King wrote a book is if it's set in Maine. <laughs> yeah. Well, and a lot of people think this takes place in Wash or in Oregon because they talk about Portland. Portland. And they don't tell you that it's Portland, Maine, mm -hmm. not Portland, Oregon. I'm like, nope, wrong state. <laughs> yeah. The only person to put a setting for a book in Maine is Stephen King. And they're all there. They're all every there. Every single one of them. Because he's from there. No, I love it. And yeah, I, I love Stephen King. But to your point, Matt, and the fact that he talks about the ending, his endings are the worst parts of his books, typically. Like, he's great, at least in my opinion. That's my opinion. But most of the time, his endings piss me off. But this book, it's not terrible. But the movie does do a lot better. Because the ending in this one's great. I love that moment where it's like, oh, look, they reconnected. That's awesome. He's got his weird little boat that he's hope nobody's not planning on taking too many people on long tours on that boat, but <laughs> three <laughs> hour tours. Or how does he plan on how does he plan on getting that boat's gonna be there till the next high tide? <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I, I doubt they ever went that. out of the boat. They're both a couple of old men at that point. Yeah, like you gotta push that off the sand, you're gonna break in half. Yeah. Um, one of the other things that I love about this is the stories. Again, I talked about this with Goodfellow, but the stories within the story, like we have this, these people that we see and we have this group of people that we watch this movie with, and then you insert pieces to it, right? Like Brooks is there and he's there. I mean, you see him around, but he's not part of that core group that we hear talking, but then his story is injected and we learn a bit, little bit about the life of, you know, in a, a an imprisoned man for 50 years and how you're institutionalized as they talk about it in that. And then you have this struggle that he realizes that red realizes he's becoming like Brooks, that he doesn't know what he would do. Like he'd almost prefer to stay there because that's his life. That's his routine. And then you have the young kid that comes in and blows up everything right by becoming a friend with Andy and then becoming, you know, letting Andy mentor him to a degree. And then by some stupid ass chance, hearing this story that then connects to the story that he heard from, like, I love those little interjections that they set the tone of the routine. And then they bring in these moments that break the routine. And that's what this movie becomes is this hidden routine that is then the major routine that we know about is broken up by these interesting moments, sad moments in a lot of cases, but interesting moments that tell this story about these guys. I think that's why I love this movie so much is the structure of it is very intriguing. How do you take something that on a day-to-day -day basis is not interesting and yet it's still good 
movie making and interesting storytelling. Yeah, I love the corruption in this film. Um, <laughs> I think they do a great job of kind of with these stories within stories telling like how this prison and the prison system in general isn't really about rehabilitation. Right, because we open up seeing you know Red going for his parole. He's like, "Hey, you know, been here for twenty years. Yeah, I'm a changed man." We kind of get this vibe that he's not a violent criminal, right? He's already looks like he's a bit older, mature, and everything like that. And you know, immediate rejection, right? And then we get it again a little bit later. Same thing, rejection. And then you know, at the end of this movie, we get to the point where he's like, "I don't even fucking care." Anymore. <laughs> and it's like, yeah. "Oh, yep, yeah, you're good to re-enter society." Um, yeah. So it becomes this arbitrary thing uh, for, you know, the way the prison system works, that it's not really about rehabilitating people. It's more about making money because prisons are businesses. Sure. Um, and so we're, we're going to keep you here until you, you know, need us so much that you're not going to want to leave anymore. And we get that from Brooks. We get it from Red. We get it from all these people that are talking about, you know, the walls are there as protection. We need the walls. So you have all these stories that interconnect and focus on. Great storytelling, but what I picked on was, oh, 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 I'd make a great prison warden. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that and it goes along well with the line from Andy where he's like, I learned how to be a criminal by coming to prison. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I was <laughs> had to come to jail to be a crook. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I have two thoughts. This movie always makes me think of one is this the warden is the type of person that makes you think of like why m many people hate religion because you use religion to further the advances of your very skewed agenda like oh you're so moral and right and then you're also scamming people out of a significant amount of money you're imposing your what you believe your just moral values and like belittling people and causing pain and just outright murder you're just cool with that and you're a man of god like that scene where he the kid that he brought out beyond just beyond the prison gates to find out that, yeah, he was telling the truth about Andy's p actual person that killed him and then just did him dirty right there. Like, dude, that's the cold blooded killer right there. Just he didn't pull the trigger, but he pulled the trigger. Um, and then the other part I'm always impressed with is and rewatching it this time is just the balls that Andy's got because. He's been digging. I mean, how long was he digging for? Like, what was it? 20 years? 20 years. 19 years. Yeah. And all he did was slap a poster of a beautiful woman on a wall. And no one thought twice when they were doing like cell checks that they probably had. I don't know, at least once a year, maybe once a month. Who knows? I don't, I'm don't. i sure there's some standard thing. And he survived it all. Yeah. Obviously, it's in a real story. But still, just to sure. think about the balls of that still just like he's like, you won't. You won't. Yeah, well, well the best is when he hands him his Bible with his little yeah, yeah. rock camera, <laughs> and he almost takes it. Yeah, like, he almost doesn't give it back. Like that's the best. Like, and I think that goes into what I love about that whole storyline. Oh, I him. forgot about that. That it was in there when he yeah. gave it back, and he's like, "Oh, don't want you to go without this." And then he says the line that he writes in it eventually that it's salvation is in lies here. within. Mm -hmm. Yeah, salvation lies within, and it's like shit, it's a good thing you gave that back because he would have found it and then it would have been like, oh, God, then you're in trouble, right? You're, you're found out. But, like, the piece that I love about that is the bat, like, what? think about it backwards, right? So we know now he was using that to dig out. He started doing that in the midst of those two years when he was being raped and harassed by these inmates, right? And then he concocts this plan because you know this guy's smart enough to go, I can't be found out. Like they can't search too hard in my room. They need, I need them to trust me and feel like I'm, you know, as trustworthy as possible. So he, what does he do? He does. He goes and gets in this guard's way, which means one of two things is going to happen. He's going to get thrown off the building. Have then himself he's an accident, it, right? He does. Yeah. He's, gonna, he's about to have himself an accident. Then he doesn't care. Okay. He's dead. It's whatever. Or he's now in with the scariest guard. And all the rest of the guards, we see that grow. So they're not going to, this is their guy. Like, they're not going to mess with him. Well, that's you why they beat up the sisters then. Yeah. You, seriously, like, they take care of him from that moment. So he's in. So now, with some level of safety, he feels like he can do this. He gets to keep his single cell, right? Like his corner cell that's on the wall so he can get out. All of these things have to happen for him to be able to do what he's doing. 
So he knows he's got to work on it. So like for me, it's this moment of genius. If you don't realize how smart and manipulative he is until you look at what the end result is. And he almost fucks it up when the young kid comes in because he's like, oh, did I just get an easier legal way out? Not realizing that the warden was that corrupt. Like he knew he was corrupt, but he didn't know he was murder corrupt. And then shove him in the hole for 20 years corrupt. Like that's a different level. And so, but that's the part that I love looking back on when you get to the end and you're like, oh shit, all of the things that he did was to set up, set himself up for success to be able to break out. So how long has he been planning it? Is it a full 19 years or as he started, he's like, shit, I can dig my way out. Did they kind of piece together? So that's when I start thinking about like, oh shit, this is interesting stuff. No, that's a great point. Cause you also have to bring up the fact that, you know, Randall Stevens. Right. He yeah. creates this phantom that he is perfectly prepared to step into signature matches, has all the right identifications, birth certificate, all these things. So he's able to game the system at the same time. And it's that light bulb that goes on at some point in his incarceration where it's like, oh, hey, I'm smarter than everybody in this building. Like, I've got to figure it out. I've got a plan. And I'm setting myself up for success. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. I love that part of it. And on a different note. The hole in this movie looks very comfortable compared to what the hole in the actual prison looks like because that shit existed. They showed it to I was like, mm -mm. I would be the perfect inmate because that shit like you see light come into that room like in the movie. No, no. In the prison itself, like it's like a you couldn't lay down long like sideways like you from gate to the back wall. You could. But. I couldn't even, like at 5'10", I couldn't lay down. Like It was like maybe four feet wide by six to seven feet long. And there's a bench, like a rack on one side that they didn't give you bedding or anything. And it, there was no light, none. Like when they turned it on, and they, they put you in it and then they'll turn the lights off. And I was like, fuck you. Because you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. Like it was mm. that dark. And you're down there for month, a month, right? Or two months. I was like, nope. Cuckoo for Cocoa Puff shit right there. Like you, I couldn't, mm -mm. it was nuts. So I, I watched that moment. I'm like, fuck that. Two months in. Is yeah, it, they is do a very good job of kind of like the solitary looks pretty nice. In the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It didn't. Jay, here's a, here, well, for the both of you, would you rather be in solitary confinement for two months or have to crawl through 500 yards of crap? Oh, oh I, yards of crap. Well, if, I, if there's the opportunity for escape, and be not having to be at there at all, 500 yards of crap. Though I, they show him puke once, I'd be puking the whole time. Yeah, I'd be crawling just boop, boop, like, yeah. It'd be hard to breathe down there because the fumes. Oh, oh yeah, you'd fuck, it'd be rough. 500 yeah. yards. That's five football fields. Yeah, thanks. Almost half a mile. Thank you for just making me want to wretch thinking about that. But I mean, the shit you do for freedom. <laughs> I could crawl through that to get out of a prison for I spent 20 years in. Hell yeah. That's crazy. Such a good movie, though. Like, yeah, I do just thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy that movie. Um, the acting's outrageous. That's I and I want to talk about the acting from like the side characters for Zen, because we know Tim Robbins, you know, they're all great. Like the made players, Morgan Freeman, Tim Robbins, Bob Gunton. Clancy Brown even are amazing. Like if you want to, but you look at the other side characters. Like you got William Sadler as the the dumbass, <laughs> Alexandre Dumas, yeah, dumbass, dumbass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, shit. The, what what is he called? Like the yeah, he says the word. The Count of Monte Crisco. Crisco, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Crisco, dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> like I love him. Like Brian Libby is Floyd the big goofy dude. And then you get like, even Tommy, like Gil Bellows is the young guy that comes in. And then Mark Rolston is Boggs, the fucking asshole. That was the sisters. Like all of these characters. And then Brooks, like they're so intriguing, even though they're only in it for as side characters or a few minutes. So that's like, to me, my, one of my favorite parts of this movie is that that cast of supporting characters is, some of the best in Hollywood we've ever seen in a movie, I think. 
personally. Cause that's, I love all the scenes, whether it's just Andy and red, or if it's the whole fucking Hank gang hanging out in the, in the mess hall or in the library, like messing with each other. Like, I just love that whole scenario. So I, I think that's one of my favorite parts of this movie too, is the acting as a whole. Oh, it's great. And it's, also something where we want to know more about him right Mm -hmm. like we get a little bit with brooks we kind of figure out when he's come to prison when he's made librarian a little bit exposition but for haywood right we get nothing except the lawyer fucked him he didn't do it um (laughs) and just a few other tidbits about it but we still like care about Haywood as a character and Floyd as a character, even though I think Floyd has like three lines, if yeah, that. Yeah. Um, but you care about him, you see him, and you kind of want to know more about their story. So even when they're acting in the background, it's enough to kind of pull you in uh, when they're not a main player. Yeah. It's good stuff. Great story. Two things mm-hmm. that I want to say, uh, yeah. kind of my closing is I love the the character arc of Red because I think a lot of this movie is about him where like we talked about the was was Brooks the old man that mm-hmm. yeah where like you were saying Jay that he didn't he realized he was becoming that as well and didn't know what he could do outside of prison but a lot of this since it's uh Red's perspective of of this is seeing the hope that is instilled in him through time because of Andy Andy getting out and then he himself seeing that there's more than what he thought it could be when he got out. And I tried to watch it from that lens this time. And because I think a lot of times it's, you can think it's a story about Andy, but at the same time, it's really a story about red and what he learned and gained because of his friendship with red and the perspective that was given to him. And for those of our uh, listeners that haven't watched this movie, now that you're listening to us talk about it, I encourage you to, when you watch this, see see from red's eyes uh, instead of thinking this movie's from andy's eyes and just see what perspective you gain from it and then the second thing i'm always big on music and movies mm. this we didn't talk about that yet this movie does that very well very emotional at certain periods of time um i like the score a lot yeah and what a great moment when he plays the opera over the <laughs> the loudspeaker and everybody's pissed. That's a great line line from Clancy Brown too. Like when the warden finally turns it over and he's like, Dufresne, you're mine now. <laughs> like, <laughs> <"Ruh-ro."> <laughs> so no, I love that point though, Madison of watching it from red's point of view. Cause technically it is from his point of view, even though we don't recognize that until you say that. So I, yeah, that's a great point. All right. Should we rate this turd? I say turd. Turd? Turd. turd. I'm about to the give it a five. What the fuck so. is wrong with you? <laughs> been hanging out with Matson too much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's my, no, Alec, this is your choice. It's my turn, turn to go. Get out of here. You go. I love this movie. Uh, this is something that I think I need to go a bit of time between rewatches, like a year or two, um, just so I can almost forget a little bit about it before coming back in, because there is so much nitty-gritty little stuff that can be picked up on like i mean we kind of mentioned it but clancy brown as the toughest screw to ever walk a turn at shawshank (laughs) phenomenal and he's done amazing throughout his career but this is one where it's like oh this is pete clancy brown yeah um and everybody plays off so well together you believe that this is actually a story that has happened despite it being based on a book and completely fictional it makes you believe and it draws you into think oh man this could have been Like, when did this happen? How did I miss this type of a thing? So this is a 100% of five for me. And I will definitely be watching this movie again. Nice. All right, Matson. Yeah, it's a five. Trying to think. I resonate with Alec in thinking that I can't. This isn't a movie that you can watch again lightly. It's like how I kind of view The Dark Knight. It's so well done and emotional enough that to truly be enjoyed, there needs to be time in between. Um, yeah, I don't know if there's... I thought I had something else I wanted to say. No, just solid in every aspect. Movie, acting, character progression, music. I mean, there's really nothing to, but good things to say. And if you haven't, if it's been a long time since you've seen it, like we just did this, go watch it. Good time. Definitely. Yeah, I'll give us another triple five here. 
I think we'll see a lot of that this month. I, I mean, they wouldn't be re, they're not good movies to rewatch for nothing. Ooh, so. I, I don't know about some of the, I don't know about some of the later ones being full fives. I can already tell you that, but you can leave again. That's fine. <laughs> the only one <laughs> that I can accept a non five for you is the last one. And we're not going to give away what movies are coming, but the last one I can be okay with it. Cause you've never seen it and it's not your style of movie per se. But if you don't give next week's a five, we might not be friends anymore. Um, but anyway, this movie's definitely a five. It's really good. It's acted phenomenally. The story's amazing. Like it's got one of the greatest, like non Count of Monte Cristo, Count of Monte Cristo type stories that you can have. And Count of Monte Cristo is one of my favorite books. So the reference to it in a jailbreak movie is phenomenal. And the fact that he gets the revenge in the midst of it as opposed to the end, I think is great too. Like he's setting that whole thing up. Anyway, I love the movie. It's got two of the most recognizable voices in all of Hollywood with, you know, Morgan Freeman and Clancy Brown. Like those two, you hear them and you're like, oh, yeah, that, that's them. You know, Mr. Krabs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. There's no question who you're listening to. And the acting is just great. It's just a great overall movie. So five for me as well. Um, man, good movie. With that, Alec, tell everybody where they can find us. Happy to. Thank you for tuning into our review of The Shawshank Redemption. Some, not me, may say this is the best movie ever made. Even though I don't say it is, it certainly is up there. Uh, one more time, head on over to Manscaped to pick up your Performance Package 5.0 Ultra and get 20% off when you use the discount code The Verdict. And you will also will receive free shipping. Uh, thanks again to our current patron, Guy Pierce. He's a real good friend of mine. Uh, for picking this absolute gem. We are in week two of Movies Worth a Rewatch. So hit that like or subscribe button to not miss out on the rest of the month's episodes. With that, I will send it back to the King of Crash, the Sultan of Swat. A joy joy. Yeah. Good times. Thanks again, Manscaped. We appreciate your sponsorship. Go get your uh, 20% off and free shipping. Use the code TheVerdict manscape.com and uh with that as always it's good to have you back Matson, and we appreciate you guys tuning in we'll catch you on the next one you're on mute that's the you're best on, you <laughs> <got my ass. laughs> la vista, baby cinemagic out i love you Jingle fuckers out, head swells. <laughs> fuck you Matson. <laughs> <laughs> whoa